Yay, we are live. Hello, hello, everyone. I am Lindsay Dollinger with the Social Selling Sisterhood podcast, and we're doing a video podcast tonight. And we have a special guest with us. I'm super, super excited that you guys can all hear everything she has to say because this is Heather Wilson. She is a resume builder, resume writer, and a LinkedIn strategist. And LinkedIn is one of the places that I think a lot of people in direct sales, social marketing, they don't use either period at all, or they're using it maybe not to its fullest potential. So I'm super pumped to talk to Heather. So Heather, would you mind to tell us just a little bit about you, how you got started and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. So I agree that LinkedIn is really underutilized even for as long as it's been around. So I actually started using LinkedIn when I was in college and it's how I landed my first job after college was connecting with my, who would become my boss in California. And they flew me out for an interview and I ended up moving across the country um, right after college. So LinkedIn is a very valuable tool and it can be used in a lot of different ways. Obviously, you know, being in direct sales, relationships and credibility is huge and building those genuine relationships. And what I like about LinkedIn is that you can put a name with a face, mm -hmm. right? So, um, I mean, a lot of social media allows you to do that. But the nice thing about LinkedIn is it's a professional network. And so you kind of have, um, you don't have that Facebook drama that can happen or other platforms where it's a lot of personal stuff mixed in. So yeah, LinkedIn is, is a really valuable tool and I'm excited to talk about it tonight. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So you kind of started off where I wanted to ask like the big question. So Facebook, LinkedIn, the biggest difference is that LinkedIn is more professional. Can you yeah. LinkedIn, you won't see a whole lot of like pictures of like sharing family vacation or like political statements or uh, really just like life information. It's really just more professional and building those relationships. So um, there are still there is still a feed and you can post content on, but it tends to be more professional articles um, different like opinions or tips, like business tips, things like that. So that's awesome. what I like about LinkedIn is when I go there, I know that I'm going to get valuable business information and you can stay really focused and not have the distractions either. Oh my gosh. I love the sound of that already. <laughs> I'm like, cause I can get so sucked in all the Facebook stuff and I'm going there to work my business, but then it's like a half an hour later and I'm like, okay, I didn't actually work anything. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. so you have a profile on LinkedIn like you do on Facebook. Are there any key pieces that are really important to have for like a standout profile or anything to like avoid? Yeah, um, some of the common things that I see is people, it sounds really simple, but not having a profile picture mm -hmm. on their LinkedIn profile. And this I, should be like a headshot? Yeah, a headshot. And it doesn't have to be you in a business suit. I'm not saying it's like business that uptight, but... Um, probably not you like hanging out in a hoodie or something or an unclear picture with sunglasses on. You want to make sure that they can see your face and it's a good picture and kind of rock your style too. So a nice close up for a headshot. And then there's a cover photo on LinkedIn um, that's kind of like a banner in the background. So that's a great place where you can maybe put your business logo or your product or something that represents you and like who you are, your interest. So that's kind of where people can get a flair and I always like to make sure that people have that. I see a lot of, even if they have a profile picture, a lot of blank cover photos. So mm, I, I'm, I'm like, I just wrote it down. I'm like, I'm pretty sure mine is blank. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad because I've seen, because it's a little smaller than Facebook's, right? Maybe yeah. like dinner or something. Cause mm -hmm. I've seen it on um, Canva. Cause I use Canva to make graphics and I've seen a LinkedIn one on there and I need to do that. So yeah. yeah. Okay. So good. And then I think the other things that I sometimes see is like, even if you click into somebody's profile, they don't have any information about like the prior roles or the jobs they're at now. So it's basically like a blank profile. It's just their name and a picture, which really doesn't tell you much about that person. So just making sure that your profile is complete and I can kind of get into more of the specifics on that. Um, another thing is to create a custom URL. So LinkedIn automatically defaults to like a bunch of numbers and characters um, mm -hmm. for your URL. 
But when you can go in and set the custom URL, which is really simple, it should be in the top right corner of your profile. It will be linkedin.com slash in slash whatever you want it to be. It could be your name. It could be your business name. You'll kind of have to check and see what's available. But Mm -hmm. then you can put that link on business cards, on your website, and just make it really simple for people to find you. Awesome. Now, should you pop up in searches anyway if people are searching in certain keywords? Like, is that is there like an algorithm kind of like Facebook? Yeah, keywords are really important. So um, going along with that, there's kind of a like a headline uh, at the top of the profile. So this is where you can put, um, you know, I help entrepreneurs do this or like the problem that you solve or the industry that you're in. So those keywords will be really helpful when somebody clicks on your profile, they'll immediately know like what you do and what you're involved in. Awesome. I love that. Um, Okay. So how often should we be posting? Like, is it important to create content on LinkedIn or is it more important to engage or like both? Yeah, I think it's um, whatever you want to put into it on LinkedIn. I find the personal connections really valuable. And so the way that you're connecting with people on LinkedIn is they kind of have this setup of first, second and third degree connections. And so a first degree connection is somebody that you're connected to and know on LinkedIn. They've accepted, you've accepted your connections now. Second degree is like a friend of a friend. Third degree is like a friend of a friend of a friend. You know, it starts getting further out in the network. Yeah. And so um, the free version, you're kind of limited how far out in the network you can connect. But I actually wouldn't encourage everybody to like run out and grab the paid version because it wasn't until this year after nearly a decade of using LinkedIn that I actually paid for the paid version for some business perks um, on the resume side. So you can do a lot with the free version and connecting with people. And the more you build your network, the easier it will be to connect with people because that web will grow larger. So um, that's really important. And then when you're sending connection requests, always, always, always click add a note. And this is where you can type a personal message to the individual to let them know why you want to connect. I almost never accept connection requests from people that didn't write a note to me or that don't have a really good profile because I don't really know why they want to connect with me. So okay. it's a great um, way. I mean, it's short, but you know, address them by name, say why you want to connect. Maybe if you have a mutual connection in common, that's a great way to start a conversation. Or I saw you work for such and such company, or this is your interest, like make it really personalized to them. I like that. I like that a lot. So Okay, so gearing it more a little bit toward direct sellers, would you recommend that people automatically like I have a business opportunity or like, is it still kind of with Facebook where we're building relationships first and then definitely relationship building, you don't want to spam people on LinkedIn either. But I think in that connection message, if you can, you know, really relate to them right off the bat, that's a good conversation starter rather than like connecting with somebody without a message. And then it's like, silently afterwards you like hey in their messages like right after you accept the connections so right right. um, having that conversation up front okay okay i like that i like with the different degrees that's really cool because i feel like on facebook sometimes we get in that web of a friend of a friend of a friend and you're like i have no idea like how we even connected another way to engage too is to comment on people's posts so if you're you know connected and they're posting content you can comment on their post and over time they're going to see you're commenting on all their stuff and you're taking an interest in what they're doing so that's a great way to build a relationship too awesome so that's kind of similar to like facebook instagram too where you can build relationships that way um so then that makes me think is there a private profile public profile option Yes. So there are privacy settings. When you go into your profile, you can kind of, it's got like this whole list of toggles where you can turn on and off um, what sections of information you want to show publicly to like anybody, whether they're on or off LinkedIn, if they're only on LinkedIn, if they're only connected to you. So I think like my stuff, I have it set up where like my headline and everything is public, but then my job, um, title is public, but all the descriptions and details are, aren't seen until like after they're a connection. Okay. So it's kind of like your preference, but there's a lot of different settings on visibility. Awesome. Okay. So now 
again, going back to like the direct seller or someone who has their own business, there are business pages on LinkedIn, right? Like you mm -hmm. could. Yeah, uh, you can create like a company like, profile page. And so okay. then you can um, link that to your profile too. So when you're typing in your company name, it will actually like link to that page. Okay. And then people can search you and find you and that'll help with keywords and algorithms too. Okay. So you would recommend if, you know, if people are branded and want to get their company out there that mm -hmm. they would do that also. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Really great. Now, okay. This is showing my like complete like ignorance. I apologize. Is that like a separate account or is that something you can do from like your free version? You can your add your version. You would just um, create a company page. So kind of like you do in Facebook where you're on your mm -hmm. personal profile and you create a page. It's the same concept. Awesome. Awesome. Now you mentioned you just upgraded to the paid version. What are some perks if people are like trying to decide? And I mean, people can see that on LinkedIn too, but I'm just curious. Yeah. So the paid version allows you to connect. Um, they call it like in mail. So sending messages to more people that are further out in your network that you're not connected mm -hmm. with. It allows you so many more messages per month. Otherwise you're limited. So if you're doing like a lot of connecting right off the bat, you might want that. If you don't want to like slowly grow your network. Um, for me, for resume writing and LinkedIn strategy, it has a feature called ProFinder. So it actually sends me people that are looking to have their LinkedIn profile um, updated or reviewed by a professional or looking for resume help. So that's really nice because it sends it like leap direct to my inbox saying like these people are looking for professional help and it only allows five professionals to pitch the individuals and then it shuts off. So oh, it's not like this, these people that are saying they want this help are being bombarded with hundreds of like pitches. It literally only allows five professionals. So first come first serve. And um, then you can kind of jump in and give them the spiel. Okay. I love that. That's really cool. That works perfectly for you too. <laughs> yeah, it works really well. So I haven't kind of played around with other industries to see like what the pro finder could be a value for them, but definitely look into it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely... I'm going to look into that for sure. Um, okay. Another feature I saw on LinkedIn, um, cause I was using it a little bit more this summer when I had some time at home, you know, um, was groups. Mm -hmm. What's the deal with the groups? How do they compare to like Facebook groups? I feel like they're not quite as active as Facebook mm -hmm. groups. There are a lot of groups on LinkedIn. So I think it just depends on finding the right group and the right topic and the activity level. Um, I haven't seen a ton of engagement in LinkedIn groups personally, but okay. maybe some other, you know, specialized topics would have a lot more engagement. Yeah, they might. Cause I was in some teacher groups and there was like one where people were posting, but it was super international. So LinkedIn's international, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Can you yeah. make it to the U.S.? You know? uh, the really cool thing about the search feature on LinkedIn is it's so customizable. So you can search for people, you can search for companies, you can search for keywords, and you can toggle by location. So you could say in US, you could say in Columbus, Ohio, you can really like narrow it down and say, I want to search for second degree connections, um, you know, in central Ohio of this topic, and it will pull all that up. Oh, I love that. So like my mind is just like ticking right now because I know I, I'm looking for women to join my team who are maybe in some other states. And I'm like, that would be a really great, mm -hmm. ooh, love, love. Okay, awesome. Yeah. I feel like that's just like, <laughs> like the secret sauce right there. I hope everyone heard that. Um, okay, is there LinkedIn jail? Like how there's Facebook jail. No, like, you know, I don't know. I've never been put in it. So I haven't really heard anybody mention that. Okay. Okay. I'm familiar with. I mean, I think like LinkedIn limits you for the free version on how many messages you can send to like uh, mm -hmm. new connections. So I know like a lot of times you get put in Facebook jail if you're sending the same repetitive message all over mm -hmm. again. Um, but hopefully with LinkedIn, you're not doing that, that you're sending customized messages to people. That is the goal. <laughs> that is definitely the goal. Um, okay, so now I'm making content. And should I be using hashtags in that content, like for people to find the keywords? Yeah, I think hashtags definitely help. And especially um, 
you know, now with career stuff too, there's a lot of hashtags, you know, looking for a job or different mm -hmm. industries. I think that will help. Okay. So, um, especially if you're looking for people to like join your team that are looking for income opportunities, you can search for people that may um, be out of a job right now and may be looking for income opportunities. Right, right. Absolutely. That's awesome with the keywords there too. Um, I think I asked this, but I don't think we ever like loop down to doing it because I'm asking you stuff so fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, with that, uh, does it have an algorithm? Like, is it better to do live video? Is that even an option? You know, I haven't done live video on my LinkedIn. I tend to share more um, just like posts and links okay. to like blog stuff. So like if you have a website and you wanted to share a post there, that's a good opportunity to do so. And then it's really where I get a lot of like my industry information. So just a good place to catch up on news. Okay. So it's not like frowned upon to share other people or like to share an external link. Cause you know, like Facebook. Yeah. Is yeah. It, okay. um, it doesn't even have to be like content you wrote. So it could just be, you know, anything that relates to your business or your profession. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Cause I know with like Facebook, it can be so tricky when you're sharing, like even like your link to order something, you know, and they're like, we don't like external links. Yeah, I don't have a problem with links. It does change them into like a LinkedIn version of a link. And I'm not sure why it does that, but when you type the URL in it, like converts it to oh, a okay. URL. Whatever, as long as it yeah. works and doesn't like penalize <laughs> you, it's like no problem, right? <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, okay, so what are some big no-nos? Like. If you see someone's profile, we mentioned not having the picture, mm -hmm. um, but is there something that we like? Yeah, so not having the picture and not having a clear headline on your profile that kind of like explains what you do. Also not having like a well-written and descriptive bio at the top. So mm -hmm. there's an opportunity to write just like a couple sentences or a paragraph like about yourself. That's like a great opportunity to give people insight into what you do before they like read on through your profile. So definitely make sure you have that. I mean, it can be as serious or as fun as you want it to be, um, you know, written in first or third person, depending on your preference, but show some personality too. I always like personality. Yeah. Okay. I was just going to ask that. Um, emojis. Yes or no on LinkedIn. I haven't used a lot of them. I would okay. say use sparingly, and I, I don't even know. On if mobile, it probably gives you that option. I don't know about on the computer. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't. It probably doesn't pop up. Um, how often should we be getting on LinkedIn? Is it a thing where we can check it a couple times a week? Should it be like part of our daily method of operation? What's it's really up to you. I love having the app on my phone because when people send me messages, then I can you know pop on and reply. And then I can get on my computer to like actively engage and, you know, find new connections. I usually like block out time to do that. But mm -hmm. it's nice when you get a message on your phone that like, you know, I can reply to that pretty quickly, even if I'm not at my computer. It depends on your preference. If you don't want to reply immediately and you want to check it at a certain time every day, but that's how okay. I like to do it. Okay, awesome. So the vibe I'm getting is that it's not necessarily like once you build the relationship, it's not necessarily, I don't want to say as weird because it's not necessarily weird anyway, but I feel like it's a little bit easier to approach people about like a job opportunity, like joining your company as an opportunity on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Would you yeah. I mean, that? people get contacted by recruiters pretty frequently on LinkedIn too. So, okay. um, I think as long as you're not being like really pushy about it, if you're talking, you're building that relationship first and then offering the opportunity or asking them if they're, you know, familiar with anybody who might be interested, that that's fine to do. Okay. Awesome. Great. Is there anything I missed? <laughs> I mean, I think, I know um, like yeah. So going back to completing your profile, recommendations are really, really valuable. So these are testimonials, basically, and you probably have them on your website or your social media, but they're called recommendations on LinkedIn. And so whoever you're asking for a, re a recommendation, they'll have to be on LinkedIn also. But basically, you can go in and actually send the request for them to fill out the recommendation via LinkedIn. So you can okay. send them a link direct to their email. Would you be willing to send a, 
or write a recommendation for me. They can go in and fill it out. It sends it back to you to approve or deny before it goes on your profile, which Ooh, is nice. You don't have to publish it, but um, okay. that is a great way because then, you know, they can see what other people have to say about you too. And I like to kind of do those over time. Don't do like okay. five recommendations in one day, kind of like <laughs> spread it out. Maybe ask somebody today, ask somebody next month, you know, that type of thing. So you kind of have a variety of timelines. Okay. Okay, great. Um, and then so when we're making our profile for the first time, is it okay to go ahead and like, do you like publish it when you're done setting it up? Kind of like a web page, like if you're not done with it. So if I'm like, okay, I have time to do my bio and my profile picture tonight, but I want to make a really cute header photo. Yeah, like, I think it's going to be live, like from the minute that you get on. Right. So, okay. um, I mean, it's fine if you're setting it up, don't go connecting with like a hundred people until it's like complete, obviously, but yeah, that should be fine. And there's, there's some really cool codes you can grab too. Um, I forget what they're called, like cards maybe, um, where you can embed it on your website. And it's actually mm -hmm. like a square block that includes your LinkedIn like headshot and title and um, link to it. So look for like different embed codes if you do your own websites or have a website person. Oh, that's a great. That way it's not just like a hyperlinked word. It can be a little fancier than that. Oh, that's really awesome. Yeah, embed the LinkedIn. Great. Um, this just like, literally, Heather, this is so much valuable information. I can't wait to share this with my team, with everyone. I like literally because I feel like if done properly, just like anything with social selling, like this could be a really huge game changer because you want professionals, you know, that's your goal mm -hmm. in building as your business. You want people that are going to take it seriously. Yeah. Um, and I feel like LinkedIn attracts that sort of clientele. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it, really, it really is a different crowd. I mean, obviously we're all on Facebook and LinkedIn. It's not like we're different people, but it's like a real different vibe than yeah. any other social media. And I love that. Like, it's just always fun to get on LinkedIn and connect with people and have conversations. Now, um, super quick, is there a max number of connections like Facebook? I think you can have 5,000. Do you know? No, I think okay. there's like a lot, lot more than that that you can have on LinkedIn. Um, okay. The other thing that I would mention when you're sending connection messages too is I always love to offer to people like, please let me know if I can ever be of assistance to you or mm -hmm. ever be of help to you. That okay. way it doesn't seem, well, it isn't uh, a one way street of you asking for something from them. Like, how can I be a resource for you? I love that. Yeah, because I feel like you know, a lot of times we hear like, no, not right now or stuff like that. And then the message just kind of ends. But if you let people know, like I'm an open, you know, open door, I can help you with lots of other things too. Um, I really like that. And it's okay. good to go back once you have your connections, you basically have like a database of connections to go back in and check in with them. You know, like it doesn't have to be like constant. It could be every three or six months even, but just like, hey, you know, just wanted to say, hey, and hope you're doing well. And let me know if I can be a resource, like just carrying on that conversation. I love that. Love that. Um, and then like birthdays, all that. I know yeah. they, they pop up for like work anniversaries. Yes. So send messages yeah. for that, just like you should on other social media. Yeah. And LinkedIn will actually suggest like stock messages, kind of like I think Facebook started doing that recently, too. But LinkedIn's been doing it longer, I feel like, um, as far as like when it's a work anniversary, it pops up with like, congratulations, congrats. And, you know, you know, one other thing. I always try to like, even if you start with those, add to it because I feel like the person oh, on the other end knows that's the stock message. So, yeah, they're going to add something personable to it. Yeah, absolutely. That makes total sense. Because I think I've even tried to use some of those. And then I like put an exclamation point or something. And there's like a weird space. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. I got to add like some stuff in here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like that. And that makes it really quick and easy to use. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. well, you know what I mean? Because you, you use it all the time. <laughs> um, and then you can share anything in there, right? Like YouTube, articles, mm -hmm. anything you find. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. That's so good. Yay. Okay. Is there anything else I'm missing? 
Um, I just think when you're like filling out your profile as far as like your different jobs or your roles or your skills, like make sure you use a variety of like action verbs and make it really exciting okay. um, when you're putting descriptions for the different jobs. Now, should you include stuff that's not, doesn't have anything to do with the industry you're looking to become? Like, should you include all the things? I don't think you need to list your like entire resume um, going back to high school or anything like that. I yeah. mean, list what makes sense. Um, sometimes I like to see more than just like one current role. Like I like to see a little bit of history. Yeah. If it's applicable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. That's great. Okay, Heather. So how can anyone who's watching this or listening to this, how can they connect with you and how can they work with you? Because um, this is just so good. <laughs> Yeah, so my business is High Gear Strategy, and I have a free Facebook group called High Gear Careers, where I give resume and LinkedIn tips in there. So you can join that free community. Again, it's High Gear Careers on Facebook. I'm actually in the process of building out my High Gear Strategy website and redoing that. So right now you can find me at heathernwilson.com. And I've got a couple different options. I've got a level up your LinkedIn product. It's a uh, $197 and we'll go through your entire profile and really optimize it and make it the best that it can be to serve you. And we'll go over a lot of the things that I talked about and really customize it for you. And then I also have a LinkedIn audit. If you just want to dip your toe in the water, it's $59 and I'll go through your profile and I'll provide suggestions for you, but you'll really be kind of working on it in a DIY fashion. Oh my gosh, I love that. There's like something for everyone, wherever you are at on the spectrum. And guys, I will definitely um, link these in. If you're watching this on a video, I will link them in the comments or in the description actually. And then for the podcast, I'll link all of Heather's info too. So you can just click on it and find her and connect with her because um, I really think this can take your business to like a whole new level, especially if you haven't even started using it yet. Um, just imagine some of the different, you know, the different people that you could connect with and could find. And it really will be a different audience. I feel like my audience and my connections on LinkedIn are not the same as my Facebook at all. Like I don't go connect with all my friends on LinkedIn yeah. necessarily. Like these are business connections that I probably wouldn't be friending on Facebook. So yeah, that's great because I feel like that's one of the most common things I hear from women in direct sales is like, okay, I've run out of my warm market. So this is a really nice way to dip your toe in your cold market and make them your warm market mm -hmm. um, and find people. So you don't feel like you're looking in all the Facebook groups, trying to find all the people. Well, and it's great too, not even to direct sell to the people that you connect with on LinkedIn, but you can, you know, meet other people. Maybe you want to be on their podcast to talk mm -hmm. about your products and services, or maybe you want to book a speaking engagement where you can share your expertise and your products. So there's other means than just selling direct to the person you're connecting with, obviously. That's a great point. I feel like that's another area we don't collab enough with other people, you know, mm -hmm. whether they're in a company similar to yours, like you said, podcasts, books, um, events, uh, you know, I yeah. think events, especially virtual events right now would be huge. Yeah. It's a great way to grow your network. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Well, Heather, thank you so much. This has been absolutely amazing. And I know everyone really enjoyed it. And again, guys, I will link all of her stuff um, so you can connect with Heather. Thanks so much, Lindsay. Thank you. Bye-bye.